Good morning, everyone. Um, this is my first trip to Japan. It's been wonderful. Um, I'm really grateful to be here. It's an honor to speak to you all. Today, I want to talk about color contrast for accessibility. And this is a thing, I'm talking about the principles for um, your iPhone and your laptop. So it will look different than on this screen. So if you want to see my slides on your own screen, you can use this QR code uh, to download the PDF of my slides from GitHub. So um, that is available to you. And while we have a QR code here, I want to talk about QR codes for a minute. Um, they were invented here in Japan. I recently learned that. And they are designed specifically for a computer to understand a visual message. So this one is in black and white, the highest possible contrast between um, two colors. So that way it is the most likely that your phone will correctly understand the message. Um, so the guideline I want to talk today about is how your users can correctly understand the messages in your app. So sometimes we get designs from our designers and they have, maybe they have the main content in a very dark gray and big text and it's easy to read. And they have some secondary text and to make it clear that this is less important, they use a lighter gray, they use a smaller font and it communicates a difference. But then they need more kinds of text. And so they add a very light gray for placeholders. And I start to look at this and I wonder, is this too light? Will my users be able to understand this? Where, where is the line? What's, what's okay? And I'm not a designer and I'm not an accessibility expert. So how do I decide if it's okay to use such light text? Another aspect of contrast I want to talk about is color. Color is a very powerful way to communicate um, an idea. Even before I'm close enough to read the word on a stop sign, I can see that it's a stop sign because of the color. And for the stop sign on the right, I can't read it at all, sorry. I don't know Japanese yet. Um, but I still know, because it's red, that it's, it's probably a strong caution, that I should slow down, that I should pay attention. So color is a very powerful communication tool. And we don't, we don't want to limit ourselves to black and white just for the sake of contrast. So how, can, how much color can we use and still have good contrast? Um, this is the slide that I think you might want to see on your phone, either now or later, um, because with the projector, with the large room, it looks different. Um, if you look at this slide, you can probably see pretty quickly that the text on the left is very hard to read and the text on the right no the text on the left is easy to read sorry i'm on the stage it's messing me up the text on the left is easy to read and the text on the right is very hard to read um, because the text on the left has a very high contrast ratio it's easy to read the text on the right has a very low contrast ratio, so it's hard to read. Somewhere in here, it's enough. And where is that line? Um, because I am not an expert, I went and found the experts. As we heard earlier this morning already, Apple's human interface guidelines are an important place to start if you want guidance for design principles. And in this case, Apple just gives us a number. They say your contrast ratio should be a certain number. 
and they don't explain where this number comes from or how to calculate it. So I had to dig further. So I found the web content accessibility guidelines and they have much more detail about how to calculate this number. And um, so fortunately, they agree with Apple completely, probably because Apple used their guidelines, um, but they agree. So going back to these colors, uh, the guidance is you should use a contrast ratio of at least 4.5 to 1. And if possible, especially if your text is very small, please use a contrast ratio of 7 to 1 or better. So as you can see, the text that was very hard to read before is not enough contrast. And the text that was easy to read is enough contrast. We can look at any combination of colors. These are just black text on a colored background. Um, we could look at white text on a colored background. And now, I'm going to get this backwards again because I'm on stage. Let's work on this. The colors on the right are now hard to read and the colors on the left are very easy to read because now there is a high contrast ratio between white and like a very dark blue. So. Now we can see a bit of what these numbers mean. Um, we still don't know how to get these numbers. Fortunately, there are many websites out there and even some Mac apps or other tools that can calculate these for you. This one I found very easy to use. You use a hex color to say your foreground, your text color, and your background color and it provides a result for you. Um, and if you have many colors you want to check, or because you're a programmer and you like APIs, they have a REST API. You can get the results in JSON. Uh, I am not going to show that code here, but it is in the slides, or I can discuss it personally if you want more details about that. But they are using math to calculate this, and we can also use math to calculate this. Um, but I am, math is not as fluent a language for me as Swift, so we can look at the same equations in Swift. And it all just barely fits on this slide, but that text might be a bit small. So let's um, look at it in more specifics. We have four important steps to take care of here. The first step is to make sure that our color is in the standard red, green, blue color space, or sRGB. If you have a grayscale color, it will need to be converted. If you have a color from some other color space, it will need to be converted, because this is where the equations are defined. And we will break it up into components, the red, the green, and the blue components. Then, oh, then we need to linearize um, the, com each component's value uh, from a quadratic to a linear um, value. Finally, we need to adjust for human eyes. We see green colors most brightly. So green gets the heaviest weight in the equation. We see red somewhat brightly and blue very dimly. So we need to adjust and balance those colors to make sure that we are calculating how most humans will see these colors. And the last step, this is a ratio. So we calculated the luminance for the text, and now we will cal and we calculate the luminance for the uh, background. So we take a ratio and divide them. And you always divide the brighter color by the darker color. 
Uh, it doesn't matter if you have light text on a dark background or dark text on a light background. It is the same contrast ratio. Um, so that is what the code looks like if you want to calculate this for yourself or just to help you understand how it is being calculated if you use another tool. So as I said, we need to adjust for the way humans see colors. And so I have highlighted the pure red, pure green, and pure blue colors on here. And you can see that the red is sort of bright. The green is very bright and high contrast with the black text, whereas the blue is not so bright and black text is harder to read. Um, depending on your screen, you may not be able to read it at all. So that is the guideline I have for you. And this is some work to go and check all your colors and maybe work with your designers. So when I have some work ahead, and maybe I'm like, hmm, is this worth it? Is it important? I like to think about what Apple is doing. Does my work align with what Apple is doing now, with what Apple will do in the future? I don't know. I don't work for Apple. I don't have secret information. This is just my guesses. But what I noticed last year, the headline feature for Mac OS was dark mode. And for the last two iPhone models, Apple has been shipping OLED screens, which are very good at displaying dark colors. To me, it seems like it is time for dark mode on iOS. This is only my guess, but this seems to be where things are going. So what has Apple done for Mac OS that we should think about if we are iOS developers or if we are Mac developers and just haven't used it yet? Uh, on Mac OS, we have semantic colors, colors which you don't define the exact red, green, blue values you define the use of the color, the, the meaning of it. And um, so label color will be dark when you are in light mode and light when you are in dark mode so that you always have enough contrast. Um, the same for these colors and several more. On iOS, I don't know what Apple is thinking here. These are the only three colors they have they don't adapt. I would hope that when they come, if dark mode comes, when dark mode comes, they will rethink this area and maybe we will get semantic colors on iOS. Whether you are a Mac OS developer or an iOS developer, you are probably already using asset catalogs for images. You can also use asset catalogs for colors. And you could pick different colors for iPhone and iPad. Maybe you have a reason for that. You can also define a different color for Apple Watch or Apple TV. On Mac OS, you can define a color for light appearance and a different color for dark appearance for the same role in your application. And I hope that if Apple introduces dark mode for iOS, that they would extend these color assets to have that same functionality on iOS. So I promised you one principle, one guideline. Here it is again. Use a color contrast ratio of at least 4.5, ideally 7, to help people understand the content in your applications. When we build accessibility into our apps for people with serious permanent disabilities, that's important. But it also helps everybody else. It helps the 
for visual accessibility. It helps the person who has just been to the eye doctor and they have drops in their eyes and can't see clearly. It even helps the person who is just trying to read their phone screen um, in bright sunshine. When we make our apps more accessible, we help all of our users use and understand our applications better. Thank you.